friends and welcome back to Violin Teacher YouTube channel. So today I'm going to talk about Buckskin Reel and uh, this is a Canadian reel which a friend of mine is having a little trouble with. So um, if you want a copy of this music you can email me. My, my um, email address is in the description below. I want to give you three things that this piece challenges you on and I won't be teaching you the fingers to it because I'm assuming you already know it. the bowings and there are random bowings in the piece that are thrown in to kind of steer you back in the right direction. Now simply put, when you're playing a group, especially a fast group of 16th notes that you want to go, you definitely really do want to play those down bow first. And so occasionally you'll find an up bow slur thrown in where it really doesn't make sense, but you need to do the bowings in this piece as they are indicated. So if you're not doing them, that may be making you feel like a little uncomfortable. So let me just show you quick, real quickly how the up bow two note slurs are throwing you back into the, the pattern of fast 16th notes going down bow first, which is what you want. Right, so if we start at right at the beginning, you'll see that the first uh, paired 16th notes is right there. Now we're down bow. Now we're up, we're backwards. But we get right here we get another slur, slurred pair. Now, every, it seems like every time you're going to play a single eighth note in that phrase, you're going to be followed by, on the, other, the next eighth note beat, you're going to be followed by a pair of slurred notes. So let's, let's put that in context. So there was an eighth note, and there's a slurred pair after it. Right there, uh, I have another eighth note. So, so you see, those uh, paired notes can make a little bit of sense if you work through it. phrase tend to throw me off personally because um, I'll show you what I mean. When I play, let's see, uh, let's see, this ends. That's a down bow pair slurred. But it makes sense here to me because you have a separate bow entry. Now, here you have separate so it feels to me like that should be, um, should better be bowing. So be slur, then a group of 16th notes, but it's not the way it is. So you've got to get used to that. Um, and I'm looking, I'm just looking for consistency in the music. So if you look at, say, line, uh, let's see, if, you're, if you happen to have this music and you're playing this part. There's a slur right there. And there's 
one there. So let's isolate this part right here. And each time you play it, in the line above and in the line below it, it's the same in terms of bowing. So I would like, whenever that happens in the music, for the bowing to be the same every time. See, I think it starts... Alright, so that's kind of the basic core of the second phrase. And I, I still want to go... So that may be causing some problems, so watch for that. Uh, and then also I find that what comes the first time I play that unit of that measure of music, couple measures, the first time it's separate bows. Separate right here. So that's backwards and it should be up. Okay. So um, it's separate the first time. Then I play this unit again. And it's slurred it's the second time. So you have to watch for where you're playing the same notes, but the bowing is a little different. And that's one spot right there. Now maybe you're just totally ignoring these um, slurs. That's up to you. Uh, I tend to pay attention to them because it is arranged by a fiddle player and um, trying to make sense of what their bowings are. So the way this ends is three separate, three slurred, and then the double D and A, the double stop ending, which, which is in a run, pony, run kind of rhythm. Okay, so, so that's one thing. Uh, another thing that can be causing you some problems is the string crossings and that's kind of the main the main thing the main point that I will give you today um, if you look at line one now if we just look at from here so you've got one E got two notes on the E then you've got a down bow A then you slur uh, two notes on the A, and you've got a single D string note, then you go back to the A. So, for that part right there, let's take away the fingers and see what we get. on that and every other place where you might get tied up with the bowing and look and see and it's probably a string crossing involved you will look at take away the fingers and look at what the bow is doing so we've got right there uh, an eighth note and two sixteenths and you're going to the A on the last note see like that alone that alone can cause some people some problems I'm, I'm moving this way up here so you can see it. Right? So, the point being is that when you're on E and you're playing on E and you've got to go to A, you're technically going to want to go this way with your bow. Okay? You're going to want to go up with the bow, but you don't. In this case, you go down. And that can be a tricky thing. Then you've got a slur. It's an up bow. Up bow. Two notes are on the up bow. So let's let's isolate that as a practice. So we're gonna go down. because it's just grabbing a D kind of on the up bow. Let's see. On the down bow. Okay. So, and um, from what I recall, Shell, this is for you, by the way, 
you're playing that part just fine, okay? But what happens in the second section may be, may be throwing you off a little bit, and I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so um, no matter what, when your fiddle tunes involve uh, these, these single note grabs, you know, or, for lack of a better term, where you're grabbing a note and then coming back to the main string, what you should be paying attention to is not... Um, not so much the note. Take away the notes and see what your bow is doing. Okay, so if you have a center of most of the notes are on the A, you should just reach up for the D with the hand. So you, should, you need to get really loose in the wrist. Now, I don't want to see you reaching down like this, ever. You really should never have a kind of bend in your wrist like that. You should go from a flat wrist to a hand that reaches up. And a part of that is tightening in with the fingers. So keep it all really loose. practice speeding that up. Okay, so that does happen there where you're playing with your with most of the f the center of the notes are on the A. Now, sometimes like for example on the in, on the B phrase where you have Let me get the notes. And right after come back to the D. See, I want to put a slur in there. Okay, so in that last part where you just have you have that two is the last note that you played, so leave it down, and then you've got to set one under it. At breakneck speed, by the way. So just get your elbow really under for that. Now if we take away the, um, the fingering, let's take away the fingerings, and we're going to play so that's one thing that I'll, I'll say I don't know this piece but I'm just kind of giving you some technique uh, some stuff that, that I see is a challenge in here but um, if you are looking at the music while you're playing it really fast you might want to watch your bow and you'll find that that will help you get better organized with that bowing, the string crossings. And the other thing is that that is an eighth note at the bottom. And then up. And you're going backward. Oh, it's a slur. Well, that slur makes sense, doesn't it? We've talked about the bowings and how they're confusing a little bit. So I don't know if you're following the bowings, but if you pay more attention to them, you might find that it, it kind of gets you better organized. And, and then the second thing is string crossings. Practice the string crossings open, open bowing, open string bowing. And the third thing is speed. And I don't think Shell has any problem with speed on this piece. She's playing it at lightning pace really, really fast. But I'll give the rest of you, if you're working on this piece, and by the way, like I said, if you want a copy of this music, uh, I'll try to notate it for you um, and get a better copy of it, because it's printed from a picture. It's a little bit dark. It's a little bit hard to read. But uh, just email me. I'll send you a copy of it.
but um, the speed and how to practice notes fast. So the way you do that is just let's take the the tricky string crossing down down at the second phrase. So you start slowly. And you've got to be able to get away from the music so you can just kind of internalize that finger, that group of fingerings. And then go faster and faster with just a little tiny group of notes first. So I'm not quite sure of making sense with the Boeings yet, but hopefully that helps you with Buckskin Reel.